Hey, this is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints. In this episode, I get a chance to talk to Matthew Register from Southern Smoke Barbecue in Garland, North Carolina. This one's really interesting because as a lot of these paths, it's, it's, it's a unique path. His path was not uh, going towards opening a restaurant, but now he has a restaurant. The restaurant is only open on Thursdays and Fridays, and there are massive lines to get in and get his food. And it's so creative. We go over his menu many different times within this interview. And it, it's definitely something that the sides even, the sides sound so delicious. And he, he's, he's a book nerd. He loves reading. He loves reading old cookbooks. So he gets inspired by that. And then his book, Southern Smoke, we get deeply into that. That book is broken down into Low Country, the Memphis Delta area, and then North Carolina, as well as he, at the very end of the book, it has information on how to throw a proper Southern dinner party all the way down to what music to use, which it's, you're going to love Matt. You're going to love all the things he talks about. It, he's very cerebral in his, uh, his thinking about food and Southern food and North Carolina barbecue. And it's, this one's fascinating. I, re I really loved it. And I am really glad that Matt took the time to uh, go in depth about his restaurant, his background, and the book. I know you're going to want to buy it. I'll put a link below to the book. Thanks so much, Matt. And we here at Kevin's Barbecue Joints, I guess that's that's me, <laughs> me, here, me here at Kevin's Barbecue Joints, is happy to have the Smoke Sheet on board as a sponsor for this podcast. The Smoke Sheet is a barbecue newsletter available at bbqnewsletter.com. At bbqnewsletter.com, it was started by Sean Ludwig, who is at NYC BBQ, and Ryan Cooper, who is at BBQ Tourist. The two of them are busy, busy, busy in the barbecue world. They're always at something. Sean is covering New York and that area over there, and Ryan's covering the rest of the United States. It's uh, if you follow both of them on social media, you'll be astounded by how much they're doing. It's it's amazing. It's uh, the whole fear of missing out thing is uh, is prevalent when you look at their social media feeds. But the and then. The smoke sheet is uh, you can check that out at all the social medias at uh, at the smoke sheet. The smoke sheet has barbecue news, it has information on barbecue events, it has information on barbecue podcasts and barbecue YouTube stuff, as well as a barbecue recipe of the week. I've been on board since day one. I'm so excited to have them as a partner for this. It's something that you definitely will read and get information. And uh, you know, say you go on vacation for a week and you're not paying attention, you Ryan and Sean have been paying attention and they're sending out a newsletter every Wednesday so you'll be kept up to date but uh, check it out at bbqnewsletter.com it's bbqnewsletter.com again the smoke sheet is barbecue news worth consuming I know you're gonna love it and if you're digging these please subscribe to both the podcast and the YouTube channel the YouTube channel if you're just listening to this on the podcast is youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ joints with a YouTube version of this interview as well as almost like 99% of my other interviews as well as additional information, additional content. I also have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with links to all the podcasts, all the YouTube stuff, a bunch of additional content. I'm writing up new articles every week, if not three or four times a week. I have some really cool stuff coming on board and I also have lists to the barbecue pop-up and underground scene in Los Angeles that Abe Delgado and I have put together and it's, that's going to be growing too. So it's, there's a lot of cool stuff. So check it out at kevinsbbqjoints.com. You can see me at Kevin's BBQ Joints on all the social media. But thanks so much for listening. I do appreciate it. Enjoy. Where are you exactly right now? Yeah, so right now I'm actually at, in Curie Beach, which is um, right outside of Wilmington. Okay. It's about an hour and five minutes away from the restaurant. So in the summertime, I kind of buzz back and forth. Um, taking full advantage of, you know, one, my parents having a beach house and my wife's a teacher. So, um, like we just go back and forth. So I buzz back when the restaurant's open and, um, that's like my summer routine. I, I'm here, you know, like Mondays, Tuesdays, then I go back and come back Friday, you know, so it's, it's cool. I love it this time of year. That's is it a, so it's a family beach house? Yeah, it's That's a family cool. beach house. Um, we've been on this island for, since 1990. So uh, this is kind of like a second home to me. Um, I have a lot of friends, you know, that I grew up with down here. I also have, you know, a lot of restaurant friends on the island. So it's really cool. It, it's I'm very lucky because we are so 
I mean, we're so close to the ocean, it's not even fun. Is there ever the issues with the hurricanes or the tropical storms? Is that kind oh, of- yeah. I mean, yeah, that crushes us, man. I mean, you know, uh, we are on that. If you look at North Carolina, there's like a catcher's mitt mm-hmm. below the outer bank. We're right at the bottom of that catcher's mitt. And the Cape Fear River is about six miles this way. So all those hurricanes just get pulled into that river. So, yeah, I mean, it's a part of life mm-hmm. you know, for us. Um, we, I'm, I've dealt with it all my life, you know, and every year about, you know, the end of July, 1st of August, you start watching the Weather Channel every day, you know, and you watch it until October, you know. It's so it's so foreign to us okay. over here, for sure. It's so foreign to – we have earthquakes, but that's yeah. – uh. Yeah, and, and, you know, when I was in high school and in college, you look for hurricanes because we're going to have great waves for like a week. <laughs> and now that I've gotten older and – I can't quite charge like I used to. Yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah, that'll be fun for about two days, and then I have to go board everything up. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, they're not they're not fun anymore. <laughs> you know, they really. Are. So, did you grow up in North Carolina? Yeah, I grew up in the county that our restaurants in. Uh, I left Eastern North Carolina for about nine months and moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, worked and live with my uncle and loved it in Nashville, but I'm a, I'm an ocean guy. I'm an Eastern North Carolina guy. And I can't imagine living anywhere else, but here, I mean, this is home, you know, it really is. For people that might not know, what's the difference between East and North Carolina food wise too? It's, there's a, it's a huge difference. And, it, and, I, and I think a lot of people think that, that North Carolina, it's all, this, it's all so close to each other. It's. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, you know, you, Especially when you talk about barbecue, it is just night and day. I mean, it is um, this Duke, Carolina, you know, Yankees, Red Sox, Auburn, Alabama. I mean, you're either west or you're east, and um, you know our. Should I take this hat off? Should I? <laughs> yeah, that kind of hurts my feelings. We've got to get you a Southern smoke hat, which I love. I could switch. I love. It. <laughs> and, you know, I love Sam Jones. It's just, it was just a hat I was wearing today, and then I realized, wait, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sam's everybody's hero, right? Um, You know, so, but no, I mean, it is, it's it's very distinct. You know, you get the Raleigh and barbecue changes, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, but it's cool. I think it's what makes it unique. I I think especially in North Carolina, um, you know, you have the Texas with, you know, all of Texas is going to be brisket and beef and those kind of things. And then you have, um, part of South Carolina is mustard, and then it all changes to that kind yeah. of sweet. But in here, it's vinegar-based, baby. And, like, if you go – it's so funny. You can be in Raleigh, and you can drive an hour one way, you know, and it's one type, type of barbecue, and you drive an hour the other way, and it's completely different. The slaw and everything. And I think that's what makes our region so cool. And that's why I recommend a lot of people travel there. I think that's because you can see that diverse barbecue as it changes. And I, I used to go to North Carolina, uh, to Greensboro a lot. I my family yeah. we sold furniture. Stamy. Let's oh Stamy, yeah, Stamies. And I used to go to to um, Lexington Barbecue. I, I sold furniture to hotels as a, yeah. for a past life. That was what I used to do. So I used to go twice a year for market furniture market. So yeah. I got a chance. That's when I really fell in love with barbecue. Yeah, I mean it's. It really is unique. I mean, you know, when you, I don't want to compare it to the wines of France, um, where you have, you go, you know, five miles and the vintage changes, but it's very true for, I mean, we're not as complex, um, as some of these vintners, you know, in France, but it is, it's, it's a food culture, Mm -hmm. you know, it is. And that's kind of what you tried to capture with your book. I want to get into that in a bit. But so when, so what, what, what drew you on your path to opening a restaurant? Yeah. So I'm not a restaurant guy. I didn't come from, uh, that restaurant background, like guys like, you know, Sam and, uh, Lexington barbecue and Stamy. Um, I was just a backyard guy that, uh, wanted to be able to, you know, teach my kids, uh, 
you know, about part of our heritage. And John Shelton Reed's book, you know, Mm -hmm. and I talk about that in my book. John Shelton's book changed me forever. And I often joke with him, if you would have read that book, I might still be doing real estate right now. (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, but he doesn't like taking credit for it. But it's very true. I mean, that book, when I read it, um, it just changed the way I looked at how our barbecue should be cooked and, uh, you know, the history and how important it is to us. So I just started cooking for friends and family and people started calling me saying, hey, we're having a family reunion. Can you cook a half a pig for us? And I'm like, sure. And I got this wild idea. Let's set up on the road uh, in Garland where our <laughs> restaurant is and set up under a pop-up tent and see if we can sell like 50 sandwiches. Well, we sold like 150 sandwiches. Wow. But the next day I got a call from the health department and they said, you either have to have a restaurant or you have to stop. Oh, interesting. You know? Wow, they're really uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody dined me out. I still had never figured out who it was. But um, so, so that's sad. when we decided to take the old fish market in the town we live in, which is a town of 580 people. We have a caution light, a piggly wiggly, and a subway. Oh, that's crazy. And we're not even, our restaurant's not even on the main road. <laughs> you know, it's like on this little side road. Um, and it was an old fish market and we built a commercial kitchen onto it, me and my dad. And, you know, it was basically one of those things where I was like, how about, let's just figure out, we can cater every once in a while. Um, we'll open up a few days a week, you know, make a little bit of extra money. And I mean, now it's like bonkers, (laughs) you know, we're, we're catering like four or five times a week and, you know, the restaurant's open, we got a food truck, the book, I mean, it's just. It's stupid. Like it shouldn't happen. Your wife did. Your wife have a connection to barbecue. Yeah. Were you yeah. married so at her, time? No. Yeah, we were married. I mean, man, I've been married forever. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we've been married seventeen years. Um, oh, well, so, congratulations! That's uh, good. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm smart, man. I've learned how to listen. You know, that's <laughs> you know, I have truly learned happy wife, happy life. Um, <laughs> But, you know, uh, yeah, her grandfather was in the barbecue business in the 50s and 60s. That's what I read. And, uh, yeah, and one of the great things before, he, he never actually saw the restaurant come to fruition, mm-hmm. uh, which is sad. Uh, but before he passed away, I'll never forget, right after, it was like two days after Christmas, I sat with him for like two hours, and we talked about nothing but just barbecue and that's one of those you know uh, conversations I'll never forget and those philosophies that he taught me like if you look at my barbecue now that's how you know he taught you know and he wanted he want he did his barbecue what were you cooking on at the beginning I mean, before the restaurant when you were doing when you had the like a, like a yeah like a oh no by that time I had um, Jessica's uncle actually I designed this big you know, reverse airflow behemoth that we call Jezebel. Um, he designed it and built, or I helped him design it and he built it. Um, but to start out with, man, I was on like a Weber kettle grill in my backyard. <laughs> I mean, like, it, you know, and we talk about the book, like, I mean, that's how I teach people to do it. Cause I mean, that's how I started. I mean, mm-hmm. really it all, this whole thing started and people have a hard time understanding that that it started on like a Lowe's, like Weber kettle grill. I mean, that's... Which, which shows that you can do it. You can do it on anything. Absolutely. And, and I tell people, before I got in the restaurant business, when we were doing some competition stuff, I got my tail kicked a bunch of times by like big green eggs and, you know, stuff like that. And they see everybody pulling up with these big rigs. And I'm like, man, listen, you can go buy a Weber kettle grill, you know, and... and some killer barbecue Mm -hmm. you just have to have the passion and you have to pay attention to what you're doing yeah and that's one thing you know i'm so thankful now that i um and i'm not a note taker and overly organized person um i'm like here there and everywhere but (laughs) when i was yeah when i was cooking um i wrote these little notes to myself like it was raining tonight you know Um, it stalled out and I don't know why I did it, but when I started like working on the book, 
I was so thankful that I could go to that black notebook that's falling apart now and look at those notes because we've gone now, we have, you know, Jezebel, we have these big industrial pits and it's so, uh, Rodolfo and myself are so programmed, like there's no, like it, I can't explain it. You know, we just do it's just it. This is what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know it. And, and I'm so thankful we had that. You know, I really am. So what year did you open the restaurant? Uh, 2014. We've been Is open back this past April, you know, and in North Carolina. So there's, and I can't remember, I think there's like 500 barbecue places. I bet, in the yeah, state. yeah. I think uh, I've counted like four or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so every customer that walks in to your restaurant, their uncle or their granddad <laughs> or their brother or they have a cousin that's cooked the best barbecue they've ever tasted. So it's a very, um, it's a scary proposition. Oh, you're going to go open a barbecue place in North Carolina. I mean, go, that's like going and opening an Italian place in New York city, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, or opening a pizza, a pizza place. place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just, it's hard, man. What made you think that yours could shine this way? Like what, what was inside I mean, of you? I've always, I'm curious as to what. I don't know. You know, I ate a lot of bad barbecue for one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not calling any names. I never will. But I had a philosophy and something I believed in. Mm-hmm. I believed in the way we were cooking it, the way we were doing it, that people would get it, you know, and I'm more, you know, I kind of venture out. I'm more chefy, you know, with our sides and stuff or kind of funky and cool. And, and we always say, well, why not? You know, when we talk about sides or doing things in the restaurant, our question is always, why not? Why can't we do that? Okay. You know, and I guess that worked. And me being ignorant, you know, oh, yeah. and just knowing and thinking, hey, my barbecue is really good, you know. <laughs> Not realizing that, you know, Sam and Grady's are, you know, an hour and a half away from us. And they've been open 70 years, you know. So yeah. I didn't think better. You know, I just was like, hey, I want to do something good for, you know, the town we live in. And if I can make a little bit of extra money, then great. But I really enjoy doing this. And that's why I always tell people that say, man, I love barbecue. And I'm like, well, be careful because. You may end up in the restaurant business. So when you opened, were you open six days a week? And and what was the schedule? Oh, so that's the weird thing about us. We're only open two days a week. Okay, that so it is two days a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Thursday, Friday only. We do, basically, we have a food truck that runs a lot on Wednesday. And then we're usually double or triple booked on Saturday. So With everybody says, oh, you all, yeah, everybody's like, well, you only work two days a week. And I'm like, well, yeah, in four days I get 90 hours in. So, <laughs> you know, let me have my Sunday, Monday, yeah. you know? So, but yeah, so the restaurant has always been Thursday, Friday. I think eventually we will expand maybe Friday night, maybe Saturday, but we open up on a Thursday. We had a line out the door um, that was down the block. Really? And yeah, ever since. I mean, which now listen, I was calling everybody that I knew and saying, Hey, bring a friend. Like your boy, needs, your boy needs to like make the dream, you know, help the dream live, you know, with me. So, but yeah, we, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, it really is. So what's on the menu specific? We always have barbecue and ribs and usually Thursdays or some type of smoked chicken, whether we do just regular chicken quarters or I do a jerk chicken or, we do, I do this version of Alabama white sauce called Carolina Blanco, okay. which has a lot of like Mexican spices in it because we live in an area with like a heavy Latin population. So you're going to see like tamales and street corn and, you know, like all these kind of cross blended stuff on our menu. Um, then Fridays, uh, we always have fried chicken um, or either I do like a fried chicken sandwich. We do fried fish. Um, but our sides are very seasonal and very like fresh. So if, if I have a farmer call me on Wednesday and say, Hey, I've got a bushel of squash or two bushels of squash. We do something with squash. So wow. 
Um, our menu is very chalkboard. I'll have people ask me on Wednesday night. They're like, Hey, what's on the board tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know yet. Like, I'll, wow, it's, so I'll, it's that. Yeah, you know, yeah. maybe Thursday morning, I may be walking around in the produce section at the local Piggle Wiggly going, okay, what am I cooking as a side today? You know, uh, and, it, and if it's like super cold, it's going to be soups and stews and those kind of things. And then in the summertime, like now, it's extremely like fresh and lots of cucumber, tomatoes, you know, okra, those kind of things that I'm getting you know, where they're being picked that morning and like they're in a pot by how great is know, that? It's great some days. Some days it's not. I mean it's great it for the consumer, I'm saying for the consumer. Yeah, yeah. And it but it definitely but it also keeps me sharp and keeps me kind of always researching and always pushing the envelope, mm-hmm. you know, of hey, we're gonna do ratatouille today or we're gonna do pozole or we're gonna do this you know, like brown butter squash, you know, that's, you know, you should be getting in a barbecue place like where you have to sit outside and eat, but you do, you know, I mean, it's, it goes back to, well, why can't we? Do you have indoor seating or is it all outdoor seating? Oh, all outdoor. You walk in counter service, you get your food. We have this like huge outdoor area with like oak trees. I've got a 56 Ford with the roof cut off with a bar all the way around it That's and like great. everybody either eat on picnic tables outside or you eat on the tailgate of your truck. Wow. And does it open? Is it 11 o'clock? 1130. Wow. Line starts at 11. We open on 1130. And do you so sell out? Every day. Every day. Nuts, dude. Like, I mean, there's some days, some Fridays we'll close, we'll like sell out in 45 minutes. So this week, because the way the fourth falls, we're open Wednesday and we'll sell 40 or 50 racks of ribs in an hour. Wow. It's, it's just, bon- there's some days. Yeah. That's, look that out is the- really amazing. This is a, people are going to be blown yeah. away by this story. Yeah. And I mean, I look out the back door cause our restaurant, we have the front door and the back kitchen door and I open the kitchen door and just see people. And I'm like, I walk in, I'm like, y'all we're getting ready to get crushed. <laughs> like, Everybody just hold on. Everybody calm down. Take a deep breath. You know, take a deep breath, you know, but we're getting ready to get killed. So, you know, get your, get your drink, use the bathroom now because for the next hour, there's like, you're not going to stop. Wow. So. I can't, I, I honestly cannot wait to visit. And I want to see that it's, a, it sounds like such a phenomenon and it sounds like, like people really gravitate. Are you getting people from two, three hours away coming? Yeah, we had a guy um, last Friday that walked in and said, I just drove three hours <laughs> to come. And I'm like, why? You know, and he's like, because I wanted to come. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but you just drove three hours to Garland, North Carolina, which is in the middle of nowhere. And you're going to turn around and drive three hours back. And he was like, yeah, but it's worth it. And that's so humbling to that's me. That's huge. I, I, it's hard to understand. You know, I mean, and it's, I'm still like, I can't believe, like, I'll look and just laugh. I'm like, why are y'all standing in line? Like, <laughs> I'm just a regular dude that goes to barbecue. But you're putting together something special. It is, imp- like, you know, people, when, when people can, people can see that, they can sense that. You know, and, and I want every person that stands in our line to know how much I love what I'm doing and how much I appreciate them coming, you know. But I mean, I joke, like, I would stand in line for Aaron Franklin's brisket, but I don't know if I would stand in line for my barbecue. You know, and that's such a, a bad thing to say, but I'm being honest, you know, and, but people view it that way. And it's an experience too. Aaron might say the same thing. Like he wouldn't spend three hours waiting for his food. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think too, all barbecue guys feel the same way. We're so elbow deep in it all the time that we love what we do but we don't want to eat it all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, but I mean, I think coming to Garland has become an experience kind of like with Rodney, you know, with his place in Hemingway, you know, because Hemingway is down in the middle of nowhere and, you know, you have to make that long drive and you have to rush to get there. And Garland is slowly, you know, kind of becoming that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and, I, and I've talked to a number of different people about, like, say, Georgia or North or South Carolina. There are places that are so far out, but people are making those treks now. And I want to try to highlight those places, too, because those places yeah. deserve just as much business as a place in a big city like Charleston. Or- yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've been friends with, you know, the guys at Southern Soul for a long oh, time. such great guys. And, yeah, and I mean, they're amazing. One, their barbecue is amazing, but they're just amazing human beings. I mean... I met them before the fire, before I was even like in the barbecue business. But still to this day, if we're going anywhere that direction, we drive out of our way. I mean, even our kids are like, I mean, my youngest is like, dad, are we going to see Mr. Griffin today? You know, and my youngest son's name is Harrison. So naturally, he goes, yeah, he wants to see Harrison Sapp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, those are places, but it's an experience for them, you know. And I think bar- so much of barbecue is that. Mm-hmm. It's that standing in line, that making that drive, like going to Skylight mm-hmm. and pulling in and standing in line and hearing them chopping barbecue you yeah. know, in the background. It's just an experience. Yeah, and I know people that have gone to, I have people from California that have gone to the Masters, and I've told them yeah. to go to, to Southern Soul, and they've made that trek, and they've said it's beyond what they expected. It, it is. It, it's just, it's, just exceptional and, and i tell people um i cook barbecue for a living i'm around a lot of these guys and i love them all yeah. but southern soul those boys are like they're just yeah. there's something yeah and we pattern i'm gonna be quite honest you look at our menu and the kind of things funky things we do it's because of them <laughs> you know because they do that why Why do we have to be in this like barbecue box that these are the only That's things true. we can That's true. That's a great point. You look at home team, you know, Aaron and those I was gonna guys. Say, I was going to say, that uh, kind of reminds me of that too. Yeah, you know, I mean, so if you look at like our menu and look at those guys and, you know, Brian Furman's the same way and Elliot, you know, those are like. You're name dropping like the best guys. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it's like, I'm just trying to. Trying to drop names, trying to get a free hat or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, like that. Like there's a little like <laughs> click the click the button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah click the button. Um, but you know, those. I mean, everybody's kind of pushing that envelope. Well, and, well, they, like like there's been these tradition. There's traditional places, and those places. I hope they stay traditional. But I think it's almost like when you open up a new place like this, you kind of show your soul and this is kind of what your soul is all yeah. about like that. And it's interesting too, cause you didn't come from a culinary background, but you are passionate oh. about food. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I joke with people. I love a pot of peas as much as a rack of ribs, you know, like, I mean, and there are some days and I'll be the first to tell you, I'm concerned about the barbecue, but I'm also more worried about like cooking skillet corn or cooking pork belly hash that I am, you know, where's our pork at or where are our ribs at? You know, that's just me. No, but I thank you for that. I thank you. I think that's that's important. A lot of the times the sides are just afterthoughts. Yeah, not at, not at Southern Smoke. They never are, you know. I, and and I, think, I think people have been drawn to that. You know, we have people that come in on Fridays just to eat mac and cheese. They get a slice of cornbread, <laughs> mac and cheese, and that's it. And I'm like, hey, you know, like, our ribs are pretty good and we have good barbecue and good fried chicken, you know, and they're like, no, I just a big cup of mac and cheese and I'm good. That's yeah. cool. That's hey, you know what? That's super cool. That's, that's actually yeah. really yeah. important to have too. So what's, let's, let's talk about the transition to the book. When did you come up with the idea for the book? Is that something you've been thinking about from day one? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a book nerd. I mean, even like just not just cookbooks, you know, I love, I love literature. Mm-hmm. I love reading. Uh, and I i mean, I'm married to an English teacher. Both of my parents were teachers. Like yeah. naturally, you're going to have to like to read around our family. And I approached uh, them, I don't know, it was probably two years ago, two and a half years. I just didn't have a solid, like, hey, this is the book you need to write. And, uh, they hung up and I was like, yep, I'll never hear from them again, you know? And, uh, then, uh, Jennifer Rice, who is an amazing North Carolina travel writer, Mm -hmm. wrote a story in food one about me, uh, about how I go in and find these old deep South old school cookbooks and 
kind of recreate and re kind of energize these old stories. And it was in food and wine online. And all of a sudden, two weeks later, they called me and said, Hey, could you do a barbecue book like this? And, um, and naturally I was like, yes, yes. You know, like, I mean, I didn't ask like, how much are you going to pay me? Like, it's going to be paperback. So it's gonna just online. You're like, yeah, like, I, I can do it. Yeah. But that seems like your philosophy in life. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it just started evolving and it um, started out as like we were going to do history of like barbecue sides. And we just got to the point where I was like, there's no way I can tell the story. Like this book is going to be, it's going to take me a year and a half to write and it's going to be like 600 pages long. <laughs> And so we kind of, I told my editor, I said, you know, the three main regions we cook from um, on our menu is the low country, Mm -hmm. you know, in South Carolina, Memphis and the Delta and North Carolina. And why don't we break this thing up into those areas? And I can tell these like unique history and, you know, unique stories about why these things are important to the South and to me. And they kind of loved that idea. And it saved me because, man, when you start digging into Southern food, like, it's just, yeah. you know, I mean, there's there's like 18 different reasons why <laughs> chess pie is called chess pie. You know, I mean, um, and then I just kind of rolled with it. And I wrote the book. Um, I didn't realize you could have uh, ghost writers and recipe testers and people like that. So I sent you, I wrote every word in this book <laughs> and wrote it and tested every recipe and that wrote it awesome. about six months. Uh, and I tell people, I'm like, and I wrote it during the metal wedding season, which is like, I'm ready to, you know, jump off the deep end during wedding season for us. And I don't know how I did it. I just would sit down. My wife and kids would leave. And I would sit down in front of my computer and just write. And I would listen to music and, I mean, my office was like, you know, something had blown up in it. Uh, Did you put stuff all over the walls or have like stacks of cookbooks? No, I had it all on the floor. No, I had it on the floor. Like, it was on floors with like sticky tabs and I'm like writing on notebooks and like notepads. I mean, Uh, there was no method to my madness. I just kind of wrote. And, you know, I was telling, I was actually interviewing with a, a a real writer, as I call him, Wally Cash, who was a New York Times bestseller, who's from Wilmington. We were doing another interview today. And I said, man, like, I don't know how you people do it. He was like, I don't know how you did, like, a cookbook. (laughs) You know, because, I mean, that's so hard. And I'm like, no, man, like, I'm not even a real writer. Like, you're a real writer. But that's still, it is still an amazing feat and it must feel like a great accomplishment when you were finished with it. Or do you even feel like you were, when you were finished, did it feel finished or did you feel like I have another book in me too? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, there's several more coming. I mean, you know, um, I think this is it for barbecue. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I could do like, I was talking to Chris Lilly. Um, I don't think I could do like multiple barbecue books. I, I like the history and telling the story of country captain or Eudora Welty's uh, onion pop, you know, those, I, I enjoyed like researching and telling that, that story. So yeah, definitely. I think I've got at least a couple more books in me. I don't know if it'll be more barbecue books. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm tapped out barbecue. <laughs> so, <laughs> how has how the response been to the book? Yeah, it's been unbelievable. You know, that's uh, that's the crazy thing is, you know, I was so excited for people to start reading it. And we were getting this unbelievable feedback. I mean, you know, Garden and Gun talked about it and yeah. Southern Living. And we're getting all this like early people saying, oh, we love the book. And then the day comes that it's out and you're like, oh my God, like, what if people hate this book? You know, so <laughs> there was anxiety all that day, but the response has been great. We've had people reach out from all over America. I've had several people from Europe. You know, I had a guy from Australia send me a message uh, that he really liked it. And, you know, well, barbecue we're, we're, is really big everywhere now and it's still growing. I don't understand it, but it's still growing. Well, and here's the thing I think about barbecue. One, it's so um, 
conducive to guys that can stand around and drink beer and listen to music and shoot the shit, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why it's so popular. Yeah. You know, I mean, it gives us a five hours to stand outside so, and, yeah. out, and it's very primal, you know? I mean, it's, fire and it's smoke and yeah. it's neat you're you know. getting your hands dirty and you're smelling like smoke yeah yeah man and you smell like sweat and bourbon and smoke <laughs> you know at the end of the day and unfortunately some people smell like more bourbon than they do smoke yeah you know? and i think and then those people end up like burning the heck out of stuff like it's yeah you, there's yeah. a sort of fine line yeah yeah there is i mean you know, I talked about that in the book you've got to find like mm -hmm. some friends that are crazy enough to sit up with you all night long, but they also have to have a little bit of self-control because otherwise you're going to be cooking by yourself by two or three in yeah, the morning, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. Cause they're going to be passed out, you yeah, know, for sure. And I have a couple of buddies that are my dear barbecue buddies that were like that. They were entertaining from 12 to two. And then at two, they were gone and you're sitting there talking to yourself. Well, do you want to, can we break down a little bit? Like, do you want to break down a little bit about the book? I know you, there's just the three yeah. regions, right? Do you want to talk a little bit more, talk a little bit more to the book? Yeah, yeah, that's up to you. You tell me, I mean, you fire at. Fire Discuss again how the book is broken down. It's broken down into low country, right? Low country, can, yeah. can you explain what yeah. those three areas too for people? Yeah, so the first chapter is uh, basically barbecue basics, mm -hmm. which is told, you know, like we talked about before from a, backyard um, perspective. This is not a big pit, you know, restaurant style cookbook. This is a, I'm a regular dude in the backyard. I've got a Weber kettle grill. How do I, you know, produce killer barbecue mm -hmm. for my friends on the weekend? Exactly. Um, and then we have, you know, naturally North Carolina, which has got a lot of those uh, you've got things like collard chowder, which is a recipe that I came up with and, um, oh, is that something you, know, you came up with yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uni so that unique. Things that worked. Uh, they don't always work, yeah. but that one really did work. And you know, pork belly hash. And then I've got you know some family stuff like you know saltine cracker fried oysters and fried Spanish mackerel. You know, brown butter cream corn. You know, some kind of the chefy side yeah, yeah, of yeah. stuff. And then you have the Low Country, uh, which is in South Carolina, that runs from basically Charleston to the Brunswick Islands, basically right around Southern Seoul. Okay, so that's um, what it is. Okay. Yeah, and you know, I talk a lot about that history of that region and how important it was because of rice and um, the Gullah, you know, the Gullah influence and that influence of the Sierra Leone on Southern food because. I mean, it's that, you know, we hate talking about it, but it's part of our history. Yeah, it's not yeah. something we're proud of, um, but that part of Africa influenced it's very Southern influential, food yeah. uh, unbelievably, yeah. you know. Uh, Southern food wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for that, no, sadly. No, absolutely yeah. not. You know, I mean, we wouldn't have rice and tomatoes and okra and those kind of things if it wouldn't be for those regions. True. Uh, you know, and I mean, we can't, we're not proud of it, but we can't, you know, deny it happened. Uh, and it is, it's part of our food. I mean, you know, it, it really is. I mean, um, the South is a melting pot of, of Spain and Africa and, you know, stuff coming up from the Yucatan and England. And, and a French Germany. influence. And yeah. And French. So, you know, especially when you get down into, New Orleans and, you know, those areas coming up the, up to, you know, Memphis, that's all, you know, that's all Spanish and French, yeah, you know. That's amazing. So, like, there is no indigenous, you know, southern food other than corn, mm -hmm. you know, when you talk about the Indians and those kind of things. But then we talk about Memphis and the Delta uh, since probably 1992. I've been traveling to that area uh, in the winter time, duck hunting, and have spent a lot of time oh, in the okay. Delta, and I just love that area. And like the way I cook ribs is very Memphis style, and it's influenced by when I was fourteen, and I just turned forty. So this tells you how old you know. Yeah, so happy I was. birthday! It was yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I, I lost a few more hairs. And it was harder to get out of bed this morning. But there's a place in uh, West Memphis, which is actually in Arkansas, um, called Ray's. And I'll never forget, I'm on my way to Stuttgart, Arkansas, with my dad and my uncle. It's this little center block building. We sit down, and you get ribs, barbecue, potato salad, fried catfish, and loaf bread. They sit it on the table. Oh. And I'll never, ever forget that plate of barbecue, ever. Like, I can taste it. I mean, it was that long ago, and I can taste it now. Is this, does know? it still exist? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. I haven't been back. It's oh. in a pretty pretty questionable um, area <laughs> of, of Memphis. Um, I, and now we don't cross over the river. We get into Memphis to go straight down into the Delta, you know, so... Um, but yeah, and then I have a baking chapter, which is not normal barbecue. Yeah, you know, I was wondering baking. how that popped out. Yeah, real, you know, beautiful and dainty, you know, desserts. But I mean, we make pie every day, and um, you know, it's part of it. Mm-hmm. It's part of smoke. So you know, we've got all that. Were some of the recipes from these old cookbooks too? No, nah, these are all all the stuff I kind of recreated. Gotcha. And like, you know, I would get those ideas, but then I would recreate it and kind of put my own spin on stuff. What's the final portion of the book? Yeah. So one cool thing um, we do at Southern Smoke a couple of times a year called the South Supper Series, where I do these real elaborate dinner parties and um, they're themed. So uh, in the back of the book, I basically teach you and give you menus if you want to throw a dinner party for your friends. I mean, all the way down to what kind of music you need to be playing. Yeah, in the I thought background. that was kind of cool. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. I still can't believe that the publisher let me get that in there, you know? Um, and I was like, Hey, you know, I've got this cool idea. Are y'all down? And they're like, sure. And so I sent it to them with like the music and just never, they would say, Hey, why is the music there? And I would just ignore them. And like, you know, you never go on to that question. Part. Never responded, and it made it in the book. So no, but that's really if cool. You're in it's California, a good tidbit. It's important. Yeah, yeah. If you're in California, you can have a low country bull in your backyard and be listening to, you know, the Blue Dogs and drive by truckers and, you know, Hootie it's and the proper, Blowfish. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, feel like it. Yeah, that's that's so cool. That's and that that's awesome. So, are you going to be coming? Because the book, when did the book come out? It came out. Book came out May seventh. May 7th. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we're kind of. Um, I'm kind of taking a break from you know the tour. I'm not doing like Sam Jones of uh, doing the um, farewell Eagles farewell tour, <laughs> as I called it the other day when I was with it. You know, he's everywhere. I'm kind of sticking, you know, right in the south. I mean, I still. When we have, you know, when you're, if your daughter was getting married, you would expect to see Matt Register standing there cooking the food and being there. So I'm being pulled, um, you know, to, you know, I need to be there. Yeah, this is your this. time. This is your season. Yeah. Yeah. So we're kind of balancing, you know, all that out. We really so do you are. think you'll be coming to California? I don't know, man. I've never been. Like, I, I've, you know, it's funny. I've never been to California. Uh, you know, I joke, it's hard to get me past Stuttgart, Arkansas, you know, <laughs> uh, and it's hard to get me north of Richmond. You know, I'm a, I go, I, instead of going west, young man, I go south, young man. I go to Mexico and get away. <laughs> gotcha, you <know>? gotcha. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, you know. We, well, I'll spread the word for you here. That's, I could do that. Yeah, for I mean, you know, find something cool. We'll come hang out, cook tacos, you know. Find somebody's backyard. I'll come hang out. Okay, you cool. know. but I'll, I'll like I'll come uh, out. I'll come out to you. There's a lot of, and I would hope that this interview would inspire people to travel to your region because there's so yeah, much to see, yeah. and that's some like I feel like I can spend three months and still not see everything I want to see. Yeah, and I, and I think you know that's one cool thing about social media and like what you're doing. Um, people are so more in tune to, hey, we need to go to Garland on mm-hmm. a Thursday, which is really cool and important and i always tell people if you're coming like send me a message if you're flying into raleigh like i can tell you hey these are the spots i eat at like Perfect. i'm gonna go to skylight i'm gonna go to grady's you know and those are the places i eat instead of kind of going some places maybe you shouldn't go <laughs> yeah or yelping it and kind of yeah you know but i mean that's um i mean i 
that's the great thing. And, and nobody runs my social media. Um, you send me a message, it's me replying most of the time. Are you sure you know? that was, yeah, it was you. It seemed like it was you replying back to me. So it seems yeah, like. it was me. It was me, man. I still like. Uh, I still run my own social media. Now there may be other people that have access to my social media, but most of the time when you send me a message, it's me. It's always me. How far? No, so how far away? If you fly into Raleigh, how far away are you from Raleigh? Hour and ten minutes not from Marty. That's not bad at all. No, hour and ten, hour and fifteen minutes, and we'll hold food for you. That's what I always tell people. Call us. We'll hold it for you. And, a lot of times, if you get there at like twelve thirty, we're gonna be out of a lot of stuff, so I can sit around and hang out and talk. Oh, that's cool. Okay, ah, I cannot yeah. honestly. I, I I so appreciate the time. I'm so jealous of where you are right now physically. I think that's I know, right. That's I mean, I'm feeling like there's a breeze. Like I could me. see the bush, bushes or something in the, the around your right. Yeah, corner, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, but which is hot. I mean, it's like 90, 96 degrees. Um, and 96 in North Carolina is hot. I mean, because of humidity. It's like we say, if the heat don't get you, the humidity will. You know? <laughs> but, but still, it seems like I, I deal like where you are. And also, I just I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. I appreciate you putting together this book because I, yeah. I feel like it's an, impor- it's an important history lesson, too, for people. because it's, yeah. it, And it's very unique. It's not, it's not just your run-of-the-mill barbecue cookbook. Not that anyone is doing that, but... Yeah. And I want people, when they get done, to know more about um, the food we cook and the region we cook. And that was my whole point, whether people liked it. I wanted you to gain knowledge, you know, but I wanted it to be fun. You know, Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be interesting, but it be, you know, me. It seems like you. Yeah. After talking to you, it seems like you. It's a a representation of you. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I love, there's not a recipe in there that I don't love cooking and I did love writing about it. You know, there were some tricky things in it, like the onion pie and that took me forever to get right, you know, but I love that recipe. But it's so know, unique. Love, That's, no one's making that. Yeah. I've never had that. Before. Yeah. 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 I mean, but I love, you know, tying that Southern literature into this book, you know, with Eudora Welty and, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, and I'm still like, I still, it's hard to believe. I look at the book and I'm like, I still can't believe I finished that. Like I actually did that. You phys- yeah. and you physically have a cookbook and you have a restaurant and you have this crazy catering business. Yeah. Like it's like yeah, it really is amazing. And people like want me to autograph this book and I'm like, why? Wow, it's gonna go like down in value if I autograph it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's so funny. And also too, like there's a guy in California calling you right now via Skype and chatting with you. It's I know, like I mean, yeah. I mean it's ten o'clock here and what time is it there? It's almost like seven. seven. Yeah, it's almost seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I tried to call you this morning at six in the morning because I don't read emails. <laughs> and I thought it said nine a.m. And I'm like, why is this dude getting up at six in the morning and talking to me about barbecue? <laughs> and then when I'm, and then I was like, oh, it's nine o'clock tonight. Uh-huh. Not, like I tried to be clear, but I did. I thought, and and like like later on today, uh, I'm I like, just I- wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Sorry, my dog is like giving me like. You know, like nudging me and hitting me. Oh, you know, okay. won't be rubbing. Oh, I'm surprised one of my children had like came out here like harassing me, like walking behind me. That happens yeah. too. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm always hoping okay. for like an interesting real moment going on, but that's a yeah. Uh, you hang around us, <laughs> you'll get plenty of real moments in my crowd. Well, Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the yeah, time. Yeah, man, and, thank uh, you. And I hope people head out to your place. I I, I, I know you you're pretty busy, but. Uh, you could always uh, have I'm always visitors. I'm always grateful. I'm grateful for anything. I love these things. I love your show. Um, I've followed you for a while. You know, Thank I you. I geek out and watch. You know, when you're, you know, I know you have Wyatt all another day, and you know, Wyatt's good people. He's good people. Yeah, sure. yeah. No, there's yeah, th- yeah. He's an, an, an interesting, and I like that. The main thing is I like to hear people's stories, and I'm curious about yeah. how they got to where they are, and especially you. It's it's very unique. Yeah, very unique. Yeah, ain't no doubt about it. And I'll have to tell uh, John Shelton Reed, you know, thank you, thank you, because yeah. I love that guy. I love him. So interesting, I mean, yeah. And that's he's he's another person that a lot of people might not know about. And I I got to talk to him about a year and a half ago, and it was so fascinating. Bar- yeah, anybody that's in the barbecue should own that book. I yeah. mean, period. Period. Um, just especially if you're planning on traveling here, it's just such a wealth of knowledge. I still read it. You oh, know? it's so heady. Yeah, it's... yeah. 
You can't. You can, there, yeah, you can glean information from it so much. And then also, have you have you had a chance to check out Smoke Lore from Jim Moody? I have not. Uh, I, it's, no, I, have I just not, started reading uh, it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's on my. I'm trying to catch up on like non cookbooks right now because when I was writing, I couldn't read any. Yeah. So I'm like backlogged with like eight books. So I'm walking around like you know trying to finish you know one book right after another well, that's nice so. it's it's, yeah, it's nice that you're actually reading books and not just like looking at your phone like all the, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so sad well i look at my phone a lot too i mean you know yeah. that, it is what it is i know so, too. Well, cool. but thank you if tell me if i need to help in any way you know um please reach out you know anything you ever need from me you know please let me know cool Love thank you so much yeah i appreciate this so much right. have a great evening all right thanks man take Bye. care